This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxnell from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Kenna Security. I'm sitting down right now with Jonathan Cran, who is head of research at the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I got a lot of great questions here from our tech team, so you ready to get started? I am. All right. Let's awesome. First question. From a deep technical perspective, what is different about Kenna's approach to vulnerability management? Really good question. Uh, typical vulnerability management solutions will only look at the severity data of a given vulnerability. Okay. With Kenna, they've taken a very different approach, and we've, we've basically taken attacker data as well as the vulnerability severity data mm -hmm. and merged those two together to give you a real picture of risk. Um, what's, what's really different about it is that the quality and the quantity of that attacker data affects the priority of the uh, uh, vulnerability so that okay. uh, vulnerability management teams can focus on the right things. And this is a very small percentage of vulnerabilities that actually are attacked in the wild. Mm -hmm. so, so having that attacker data really changes the game in terms of what uh, vulnerability management teams end up working on. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. And I was wondering, can you go into more detail about Kenna's security platform and explain how each module plays a role? Mm, yeah, really good question. Uh, so, so we take both that vulnerability data, mm -hmm. but also the ground truth data. So things like CVSS scores, things like CVE data from MITRE and NVD, mm -hmm. and take those and, and merge those together so that you have a clear picture of the vulnerability. You know, different scanners will report things differently. Right. So having the ground truth data is really important to merge with the vulnerability data. And then we take in the attacker data and be able and we tell you, you know, which which vulnerabilities are actively being attacked. Okay. But then in addition, we, we merge in uh, our predictive data. So we've, we've taken huh. all of this vulnerability data, okay. all of this attacker data, and we've run algorithms across it to, to tell you uh, what is likely to be exploited as well. Oh, okay. So when vulnerability management teams look at the interface, they can actually see which vulnerabilities are likely to be exploited wow. as well as those that are being exploited in the wild and get a clear picture of what needs to be worked on first. Very cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now I'm curious, what happens to a given vulnerability in Kenna when an exploit is found or exploited in the wild? Yeah, it comes down to that risk score. So, so we have both the asset uh, mm -hmm. data, we have the vulnerability data, mm -hmm. and then we have the uh, attack data in the wild. And when something, uh, when something comes in from one of our threat feeds, and we have tens of threat feeds that right. are actively uh, being processed on a daily basis, mm -hmm. even on an hourly basis now, um, those things... Uh, affect the risk score, and that risk score is really how teams can can start to look at their environment mm -hmm. and determine which things need to be worked on first. So you have, say, you have a risk group with with many different assets in it. That risk group will go up and down mm -hmm. uh, depending on the uh, volume and velocity of the threat data that's coming in. Okay. And now I know that Kenna recently announced an exploit prediction feature. Can you tell us more about how that works exactly? Yeah, yeah the exploit prediction stuff is really cool. Okay. Um, it it <laughs> we took. Pretty much every piece of data we can get about exploitation in the wild, okay. about what attackers are doing, about uh, the the severity of vulnerabilities, and we started to pull out factors that were predictive of exploitation. Okay. And and so we, we use a supervised machine learning algorithm. We trained on all the data we could find available to us, about 70% of the data uh, we used to train and 30% of the data we used to evaluate it. Mm -hmm. And we build a model with many factors. I think there's uh, around 250 factors now okay. that we're looking at. And those things are pretty pretty clearly predictive in terms of what's going to happen with a given vulnerability. Mm -hmm. so, so taking all of that data together, we built this model. We've now deployed that in the wild. Nice. And that, that will allow us to, to essentially guide uh, vulnerability management teams in terms of things that are likely to be exploited even before they are. Oh my the, gosh, that's yeah. incredibly helpful. It, it's cool. If you could do it beforehand, that solves everything. It changes everything. Okay, wonderful. Yep. And so now I'm wondering, what kinds of software are you seeing exploited in the wild? Where are attackers having success in 2018? Yeah, really good question as well. Uh, you know, <laughs> where aren't attackers having uh, success know, in the wild in right. 2018? Um, we see a lot of email threats. Um, so things are yes. actively coming in over email. We see a lot more more macros being exploited these days, um, less exploit kits. Mm -hmm. Exploit kits tended to drop off around 2016. Mm. Though recently, uh, 4878, uh, there was a, a, a new PDF vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, but 
in, in general, um, where we're seeing success is really all over the network. Um, there, there are vulnerabilities in uh, systems, things like Eternal Blue, that got turned yep. into WannaCry or mm -hmm. Pet, not Petya, um, but also uh, things like at server levels where uh, DHCP vulnerabilities that are being used in order to attack yep. the entire network at once. Um, and, and pen testers probably know this. You, you don't necessarily need exploits to, to gain access to an environment. True, you know, it's true. still possible to go through Active Directory, escalate your privileges, mm -hmm. and take control of the entire network. And so those things are actively happening now, too. Um, so, so really, it kind of comes down to everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but the fundamentals still matter. Um, yeah. You still need to patch your vulnerabilities. You still need to make sure that you're staying up to date with the latest versions yes, of software. Absolutely. And that's really where it kind of sort of helps uh, companies uh, stay, in, stay in front of the threat. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how just updating your software makes all the world of a difference. It does. Uh, I'm wondering, can you give an example of how your solution was able to help a customer? Yeah, really good question. Um, I mean, it helps every customer in the sense of prioritization. Absolutely, but, but yeah. It, many security teams are much smaller than they would otherwise need to be without Kana. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, having uh, the ability to prioritize and focus on 10 of thousands of vulnerabilities uh, allows uh, teams to, to be effective with smaller numbers. Yes, absolutely. And, and so, um, in specific, one particular customer, they're able to go into the interface, mm -hmm. look at what needs to be fixed, go to a fixed group, and work through those vulnerabilities one by one, oh, okay. which helps them sort of organize their work. And, and that information flows all the way up to the CISO in that particular organization. So the CISO is seeing active nice. uh, 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 fixes going, in, going into place. Mm -hmm and is able to measure the risk over time. You know, the number of vulnerabilities being introduced versus the number of vulnerabilities being fixed mm -hmm. allows them to get a measure that they can show to their board, uh, and that really becomes valuable to them. That's incredible. That helps with the workflow so much more, so this way you don't have to try to re-explain everything that you've done at that point. Exactly. That's very helpful. Okay. And now, I know that attackers have been moving away from using exploits toward more credential reuse and living off the land. How will security teams need to adjust to keep up with this change in attacker behavior? Yeah, good question. Um, it, it, that, that's right. Uh, attackers aren't necessarily using exploits to gain access. Right. Um, they're using more of the, the tools on the mm -hmm. system. So, uh, you know, a lot of that comes down to configuration. Mm. Um, having the ability to run macros on a particular system means that attackers can send a Word doc with a macro in it True. and use that to gain access yep. to the system. A to lot the system. of Word doc ones I've seen lately, Yeah, too. that's right. It's, it's definitely been trending up. Really, it comes down to configuration management mm -hmm. and making sure that uh, configurations are locked down uh, for security teams. That's uh, a lot of what needs to happen over the next period mm -hmm. of time is that these, these uh, systems need to be configured in a way that removes some of these tools that are useful only to attackers. I mean, they're really not being used from a, a management perspective. True, absolutely. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay, and uh, are there any last things that you would like to highlight about the company? Um, I really think that this is the future of vulnerability management. Mm -hmm. having, having the ability to pull in attacker data and telemetry, but then also to predict uh, what's likely to be used by attackers, really puts vulnerability management teams ahead of the game. Uh, and so without uh, information like this, they're, they're spread so thin uh, oh, yes. and there's so much work to do that uh, it's pretty much an, an impossible task. So, so prioritizing based on vulnerabilities that are actively being exploited, prediction, this is the future. Wonderful. I look cool. forward to it. I'm excited to hear more from you guys. Cool. Thank you so much for sitting down and speaking with me today about all this. I really appreciate it. Me too. Thank you. Absolutely. And that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.